years, I recently made a video where I rebuilt a Manitou Answer 1 fork, where the elastomers had degraded and turned into a goo. The fork was seized, it was a complete mess. I rebuilt that, and I'll post a link to that video in the description here. Well, today I have a Manitou Answer 3 fork, so it's a similar, uh, newer version of that fork, different design, but this has a similar issue here, uh, to where it's like bottomed out here, but this one is not seized. It's just kind of moving freely there. I'm guessing there's a problem with the elastomers in there. Either they've like uh, just degraded uh, and turned into dust, mush, goo, or some, maybe somebody took them out. I have no idea what's going on in there. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these things apart and rebuild them and show you the whole process of that. Start off by removing the front wheel. And I want to get these brakes out of the way. So I got like a uh, five millimeter Allen wrench here. Get that out of the way. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove these compression rods. There's these little parts here unscrew, like the, the little blue one here. Just unscrew these. And we'll pull it out and see what it looks like. Uh, hey, there's a last omer still in there. There's still some down there, I think, but they're like not turned to goo anyway, so that's nice. And that's interesting, the rod unscrewed from here, is, the rod is still in there and the elastomers are still in there. Oh, okay, well I'll figure that out. Now on the bottom of the lowers here, there's some like little tiny screws here and they're a uh, three millimeter hex. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these. Now I want to try to get those elastomers and the rod out of this uh, part here. I'm going to use some uh, long, uh, like 12 inch forceps. Got a washer out. And I got the rest of the rod out. Now there's a retainer clip that holds the lowers on, and so I need to remove that. So what I'm going to do is this uh, little cover here. I'm going to kind of lift this up here. Pull this up out of the way. And down here there's a retainer clip that fits in under a lip around there. So I need to pry that out. So... Very carefully, I'm using like a, an awl here and kind of there, lift this up and work it around. And so there's the uh, retainer clip there and I need to remove it on both sides. Get this little seal out of the way. And you gotta find the end of the little uh, clip in there. There's like a little gap. And then work on prying it out from under the lip. Getting the clip out will take a little bit of patience and persistence, but you can do it. Now I wanna pry out the dust seal here. So I'm gonna use a small flat tip uh, screwdriver here. Get along the outside edge of the desk seal here, kind of try to get underneath of it. And pry it up. There we go. And kind of slowly pry this thing out. And lift it up. And do the same thing on the other side.
and got that one out. So now at this point, I should be able to remove the lowers. So I'm gonna lift them up here and take them down. And I got the lowers off. Yeah, so these lower elastomers don't look too good. Kind of melty, but uh, I'll get them all off. So now I'm going to remove these little clips here. They just slide into some slots on these little uh, rods there. So I should be able to just push them out there and slide this off and slide this little thing off. So there's like these little clips that slide into these little notches like right like that. Well, these plungers here are basically seized in place. My guess is th that uh, the elastomers kind of melted up in here and are holding them in place. So what I'm going to do is need to heat them up and soften the elastomer goo in there. Then hopefully I push them up. So then first I'm going to go ahead and pull these bushings out of the way. And get those off of there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a hair dryer to go ahead and heat the uh, upper here to hopefully soften the elastomer goo in there and hopefully that will allow me to push this plunger up and out through the top. Okay, so this came out through the top there, and so got that one out. And got this one out as well. I um, mean, you can see like the washer in there. I think there might be another washer down in here and it's just a gooey mess but I'll get these cleaned up yeah so now I want to get the elastomers off of the, this here these I think I should be able to slide off they're sticky and yeah, looks like those are actually doubled up here. And let me see if I can just pop that off of there like that. And there's some washers trapped in these. So I, I need to break these up because there's a washer there. Looks like there's a washer in the middle. So I need to break these up so I can get those washers out because I need those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a hair dryer to kind of soften these things and see if I can get those washers out of there. One. Oh, there's a couple washers here, it looks like. There's one. There's a couple there. And I think that's it. So I need to clean these up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these little plastic washers here, put them in this little uh, tray here, and I'm going to soak them uh, with a little bit of acetone and see and clean them up. But I don't want to do too much because I don't want to like dissolve the plastic pieces, but enough to clean them all the elastomer goo off of there. And look, look here's like a little metal washer or something in here. And then these parts here, <clears throat> get these washers out too.
and put a little bit of a uh, acetone in here because that does a good job of dissolving the elastomer goo And then I want to clean these things up, get all because the, they're kind of sticky from all the elastomer goo. And a little bit on here. Scrape this off. So now I want to clean the inside of the uppers here. There's a lot of elastomer goo coating the inside of these. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of rag soaked in acetone on my uh, long forceps here. And I'm going to go ahead and stick this down inside there and work on trying to clean out that elastomer goo. And I have some uh, cardboard on the floor here to kind of catch any of the drippage. Well, I finished cleaning up all these parts. I wiped everything down with acetone and then also scrubbed it down with soap and water. Uh, there was a bit of a, a elastomer stuck at the bottom of one of the lower tubes there. I managed to get that out. I cleaned up these little uh, retainer clips here. They were a little bit rusty, so I soaked them in a vapor rust for a little bit and then I just scrubbed them out with a little bit of grit and they cleaned up pretty nicely. Uh, obviously there's no elastomers here, they're all missing, so I have a rebuild kit which has all brand new elastomers designed for this fork. And so I'm ready to start putting this thing back together. So now the first thing I need to do is reattach this rod into the adjuster cap there. It just threads in, but to keep it from coming uh, unscrewed again is what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of uh, thread locker blue. Just put a drop of this on the threads there and then screw this in. Nice and tight and hopefully that won't come unthreaded again. Okay, I'm going to start off by uh, reinstalling the dust seal wiper parts here. So this one goes on first, slide that up, and then I want to install one of the little uh, retainer rings there, and then install one of the little uh, dust seals, and you want the cone side facing up, and that should hold everything in place here, and slide it up towards the top. And do the same thing on the other side, the little wiper part, the little uh, snap ring, ring retainer thingy thing, and then the little dust seal part there, and slide this up and get out of the way. Next, I want to install the bushings. So the larger diameter bushing goes on first, you slide that up and then take one of the smaller diameter bushings and it's going to go down in this little slot down here. Just put that in there and then slide the, the bigger bushing up and then the smaller bushing just goes down there. Let me see where this is slot and it just goes down that slot like right like that. So now I'm ready to install these uh, compression rods, or as I like to call them, plungers. Uh, the kit came with a, a bunch of elastomers. Uh, it's two different sizes. There's a smaller diameter uh, kind. There's a dozen of those. And then there's four of these larger diameter ones. They have a larger diameter hole. These are the ones we're going to be using for the plungers here. Now, the kit came with some grease. I'm going to be using the grease that came with the kit. Um, if your kit didn't come with uh, the grease, uh, or if you're just working on your, your suspension fork, use a grease that is uh, made for suspension forks. I use like slick oleum or slick honey. Um, if you use a grease that's not made for suspension forks, it can uh, damage the elastomers. You're not getting the performance that you uh, should be getting out of the fork. But anyway, so I'm gonna use the grease that came with the kit. I'm gonna start off by putting a little bit of grease on the rod here where the elastomers will sit. And I'll do this one too. Like this. And then I'm going to take 
one of these larger uh, elastomers and I'm going to slide it onto the compression rod like this and do another one here like that and then I'm also going to put maybe a little bit just a, a light coating here on the the uh, top of there where the other elastomers are going to sit like that and like that next we're going to drop these rods down into the uh, uppers like this and if they don't drop through the bottoms go ahead and just tap on the forks till they drop through the bottom like that so now the second set of elastomers here i'm going to slide these on the bottom here and i'll slide them up just past this little notch in there and just up there and then remember these two little clips here they're going to slide in to this little notch like that to slide them all the way in like that and then just push these elastomers down on there like that and so these are the the, the uh bottom out uh elastomers so that when the fork comes all the way down it has something to hit and not going to bang down into anything solid and then I'm going to put a, like a little bit of uh, the grease just around these here as well. Like this. So now I want to get ready to put the lowers on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of just the grease, just very light coating, and put it in around where the seals are going to sit in the bushing. Just a very light coating. And then I want to put just a little bit down in where the, the lower bushing is going to slide. So just around down in the tube there. And it'll get pushed down when we put the uppers down in there. Like that. And then I want to rub a little bit of grease around these lower bushings here. And then rub a little bit of grease on these upper tubes here. All the way around. And I'll just put it like a little bit, a little bit of thicker coating on these bushings here. And so now I can slide these lowers into place. I want to make sure that the fork bridge is facing forward. Just slide them up here and just kind of wiggle it into place so now I want to go ahead and push the bushing down into place and I can use a flat tip screwdriver to kind of push it down make sure it's fully seated now I'm going to take the little dust seal here and I'm going to push it down into place. And then I can take this little retainer ring, slide it, uh, one end's kind of flat and the other one's kind of uh, tapered here. Take the flat end, try to get it seated under the lip of the, the edge of the fork there and then kind of push it around and try to get it all seated down into place all the way around. And then I can take the uh, top part here and push it down into place like this. Same thing on this side. I'm going to slide the bushing down and just use a flat tip screwdriver to kind of push it down into place. Be careful not to scratch the fork. When that's fully seated, take the little dust seal here and push it down into place then again with the little retainer clip here 
I'm going to start with the, the flat end, try to get it sit under the little lip there in the slot, and then work uh, work uh, the uh, thing around until I get it fully seated into place. And then I can push this dust seal down and it will kind of snap down into place like that. Next we need to install the little screws in the bottom of the fork. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these lowers and push them all the way up the, to the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little screw, it's going to go in here, it's going to screw into the bottom of the plunger inside there. Uh, one of the issues here is that the plunger tends to spin sometimes and so as you're trying to screw it in, it will just sit there and rotate in there. But that, I got that one in there pretty well. And we'll try this one here. And that one's screwed in. Now, if you're trying to screw this in and it's just spinning, 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 and you can't get it to, to uh, go in, what you can do is you can take like a dowel and stick it down into the top of the fork and push down against the top of the plunger to kind of give it a little bit of pressure and kind of keep it from turning while you're going ahead and screwing the screws. That will generally work. And so now I want to tighten these screws down a little bit more. Uh, but careful, do not over tighten them. You don't want to strip the thing out in there. Like that, I think that'll be good. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and put together these stacks. So I'm going to start off by taking a little bit of the grease and greasing up these rods here that the elastomers will fit on. That way it will allow the elastomers to slide up and down a little bit uh, freely on those. And so then I'm going to start off with one. I'm going to put an elastomer on and then put a little washer on. Another elastomer and another washer. And there should be six elastomers on each rod here. So there's one. So it just goes elastomer, washer, elastomer, washer. So I've got these all built. And so then I'm going to take more of the grease and I'm going to go ahead and kind of just do a coating over the elastomers on the outside. Same one with this one. Okay, got those set. So I'll take one of the elastomer stacks, slide it in here, and get the rod seated down into the plunger down there. And I'm gonna need to push this down and start screwing this in. Careful not to cross thread it. And it should screw in smoothly. Got that side done, and then we'll do this side. And you gotta wiggle it around, get the rod down into the plunger there, then push it down to get the threads engaged, and then start screwing it in. And screw it till it bottoms out. And got that done. And then I wanna reattach the brakes here. Reattach the front wheel, and done. And so now this bike has some suspension, which it didn't have before. Uh, so that is how to rebuild a Manito Answer 3 fork. It was quite a bit different than any of the other the last Omer type forks that I've worked on in the past, just the construction of it. I liked it, it was kind of cool. Uh, what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments.
Hopefully you found this video useful or interesting. If you did, please give my video a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to my channel, click that subscribe button down there. Be sure to click the bell so you get notified when new videos come out. I'm over on Facebook, RJ the Bike Guy. Go over there, like that page. I post a lot of stuff over there. It's a lot of fun. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching.